welcome everybody to our uh, first ever Google Hangout on air. Uh, thank you, Pooja, for being here and doing this. We've got Pooja Srinivas, and uh, she has worked very hard to put a wonderful presentation together for us about using Google Plus tools. And it's late at night, her time in India, and um, it's early in the morning for others of us here. So, uh, Pooja, you're going to take it from here. Uh, if you have, uh, if you go to, let's put up, uh, Pooja, let's put up the link to your page where the chat box is. So one more time, so that people will know they can sure. go to that page and click in chat. We're so I'm, we're going to. Uh... Perfect. Uh, so thanks everyone for being patient while we figured out like everything, like how to invite people and a lot of other stuff. Uh, and uh, Mark, if you see the chat later on, you will see how busy they have been outside just waiting <laughs> <laughs> for the live video to oh. stream. Oh. Uh, and it's been yes. fantastic. Um, so um, we'll kind of go ahead. Um, I shared the presentation, Mark shared the presentation earlier, so we'll go through that. Um, but while we are going through the presentation and the live demos, feel free to like type in your question in the chat and I can see it over here so I can pass it on to Mark and the others and can also answer it over here. Cool. Um, so I'm going to share my okay. screen now. So this is what we are going to talk about today. Um, basically, how do you get started on Google Plus? Um, how do you find interesting people um, sharing videos, photos? How do you edit your photos? Um, how do you start a style hangout like this and send invites to people? Which is what we were doing the past half an hour or so. Uh, and then um, how do you track um, how many people are watching your posts, how many people are resharing and all of that stuff. And then we'll end with uh, creating a page, which is a little different from your personal profile. And we'll talk about how that is and things like that. Um, before we kind of uh, start with this, let me just go back quickly to the chat to see if there are any questions. Okay. Uh, Felicia says, uh, I can hear, but will you be having to read what we type to chat, chat in Mark? Um, yes, I'll read that out. Um, Mark can also see it on the artist page, but we want to kind of make sure nothing crashes or anything. So uh, keep on typing your questions and stuff. I'll just come back here um, from time to time and answer your questions. Okay. okay. Great. Sounds good, Pooja. Going back. Everybody get your pencils out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and within the Hangout, um, if yes. everyone could just mute if you're not talking, that would be great. I'm just going to mute Scott because he's not at his desk. Scott's at work right now in his law office, CPA yes. office. Yes. So I could hear his phone's ringing <laughs> in the background. OK, good. OK. Yeah, let's get started then. Um, Here we are. So this is, as okay. I said, this is what we are going to uh, talk about. Um, and before we even go into like what you put on your profile, and I have a few examples of profiles that you can create as an artist, um, I have found a lot of interesting people on Google Plus to follow. So it has been like really great um, just following some really inspiring artists, uh, just figuring out like um, their techniques, how they work, some of the tips that they share, and best practices and stuff like that. So it has been pretty fantastic. And I hope at the end of this session, you can also try out some of these examples and find new people um, to kind of go ahead and um, follow. So back to screen sharing. Um, um, so as I said, we'll first talk about setting up your profile. Um, and I'll show you a few examples of um, some of the interesting ways in which people have like created their profiles. So here is one of my favorite artists on Google+. Plus. This is Cliff Roth. Uh, quick check to see if you guys are seeing the same thing. Yes. Um, so this is Cliff Roth. Um, and he does speed painting. And he uh, does it in a hangout. So he's, if you can see all of these uh, caricatures above over here, he has done it in a hangout just like this one. Like, watching people as they come in and then sit kind of a thing. So um, I am sharing, uh, I have shared a, a, an art tutors circle um, on the artist page where you are watching the video right now. Later on, if you add those people to your circles, Cliff is going to be one of them. Um, 
and as you can see, he has some excellent, excellent uh, paintings that he kind of shares on his page. Um, and there's a lot of stuff, interesting stuff that you'll find over here. Um, <laughs> here is another uh, artist. This is Daniel. Um, and uh, Mark shared some of his Art Rage 101 uh, tutorials in, his, um, in the illustrators group. Um, and so this is his profile. And you can see he has like an animated gallery over here of all his paintings. So if you see it for a few seconds, it changes. Oh, wow. So this yeah. is another way of kind of displaying your artwork over here in Google+. Plus. Um, and one of the things um, that I have, if you have seen the presentation before, one of the things that I recommend is certainly put in information about yourself that will help people find you. Um, so for example, if you are a children's books artist, certainly kind of put in that as an introduction so that if people are searching for it, um, your profile can come up and people can kind of find you based on um, what you have as your introduction or as the occupation and things like that. Um, you can choose to include more information or less, but at least as my, depending on who you want to connect with, whether it's other artists or whether it's like an editor or a publisher, certainly have enough information so that they can, un, like, they can figure out whether they want to add you to their circles or not. Um, this is another artist, Lena. There's a lot of fantastic oil paintings, so you can see her profile has all of those oil paintings over here. Um, yeah, this is an, another of my favorite artists. Um, and you can see that she has her own kind of pencil sketch over here. So you can decide like what your profile wants to look like, and then you can like customize it as, as easily as you want to. Um, I'll just show you how to kind of customize your profile really quickly over here. Um, so when you just go to plus.google.com, um, and this is assuming that you have already signed up for an account, um, this is what you will see. The first page is basically your stream. Um, this is where you are going to read all the posts that your friends, the people who are in your circles, the people you follow, um, are sending over to you. And then if you click on your profile, you will see options to edit your profile and customize it further. And over here is basically your scrapbook. OK. Uh, I'll just go quickly through that in case anyone missed it. Um, so these were the, okay. like the profiles that we were kind of talking about, Lena's oil paintings. Um, you could see, mm. and I'm just checking to see if it's changing over here. Yeah, Daniel's paintings and all. And I was showing you how to kind of change this. So going over to my profile, um, if you just go to plus.google.com, and I'm just going to go back right from the beginning. So I just enter plus.google.com, which is the URL that you need to use to go to Google+. Awesome. Plus. Um, what you see over here, uh, let me check if you can see that. Yeah, you're seeing the right thing. Uh, what you see over see here your is your stream. Um, this is where all the posts will be displayed, like from the friends who are in your circle, from your family, from um, people you are following, artists, other art tutors, and things like that. Um, so to edit your profile, you just click on the profile over here in the ribbon. And this will open up your profile with options to edit. Um, now this place is where you can showcase your artwork. This is your profile picture. Um, and you can use, you can just click on change profile photo um, in order to change the picture that you want. If you click on it, it will just pop up a box where you can choose, like upload a photo or choose photos of you, or just take one from the web camera. Like if you just want to click one right now, you could do it with the web camera. Um, going back to the scrapbook, it says change cover photo. If you click on this, again, you will be given like lots of options. Um, so you can choose from any of these. Um, there's also an Olympics one, uh, given that we just finished the Olympics. Uh, mm -hmm. So you can try one of these if you want. Or you could just upload your own photographs. Or you could go find uh, albums you have uploaded and then set your own cover photo. Um, just for this size, I'm just going to pick something from here, from the gallery, and then hit on Save. 
And now, as you can see, the cover picture has changed. And I can uh, reposition this. I can make this up, down, whichever way I want. OK, this seems OK. And hmm. that's it. My profile has been changed now. Um, and if I refresh and just hover around my name over here, I should see like the change profile picture. That's called a hover card. So if you see, if someone just hovers around your name in your post, they're going to see that pretty picture along with your profile and other details that you have displayed in your profile itself. Wow. Nice. Um, nice. So one of the questions um, that was asked, and let me just go over here. OK. So one of the questions was asked is privacy settings. How do we make sure that we are displaying the right information to the right people? That's a great question. You can just edit the profile over here. OK. OK. And then you can kind of go down. So with any of these sections, you can kind of click over here. And you will be able to edit it. So I can say, uh, and then just over here is a drop down, which lets me choose whether I want to make this tagline or introduction public. Um, I want to make it to show only to my circles, uh, only to myself. I just want to keep it private or custom, which means I can choose which circles will see this. So I'm choosing custom. And I'm going to just say, my friends can see this. And I can put in like any crazy update that I want over here. No one else but my people in the friend circle will actually see this. And then I click on Save. And then over here, it will show me whether this is public. The world icon basically means everyone can see it. Um, the circle icon basically means only a few people. The people I have kind of um, said that they can see this will only be able to see this section of mine. And once you have set the privacy settings, like these are the ways that you can kind of edit the privacy settings, um, you can click on Finish Editing. And then you have this option called View As, where if you click on this, you will be able to see how this profile appears to others. You can enter a name. Or you can see, how does this look for someone who is not in my circles at all? So this is my profile as per people who are not in my circle. So as you can see, it only says my links to other profiles. It only gives me like my employment status, nothing else. So this is what people will see if they are not in my circles. If they are in my circles, um, let me just put in someone's name. They're going to see my introduction too, because that's something that I just shared with my friend circles. And then this is what you see when you edit your profile. This is what you see when you kind of see your profile. So you can add any or all of these details um, to make your profile look much better. OK, let me quickly switch back to the chat right now. OK, this is uh, great so stuff, I Pooja. see. Oh, thanks. Uh, so I'm just catching up with the chat right now. Um, just go to plus.google.com, and you will be able to sign up and create an account. If you look at the presentation, it has like a longer video. It takes you step by step. Um, so in case you want to kind of try it out, if you want to replay and watch that too, that's also possible. OK, and Charlie, I couldn't understand what you mentioned by uh, follow the arrow, if that makes sense, to see. Oh, you mean the cursor. OK, got it. Got it. OK. So I have, yeah, Charlie is right. okay. Yeah. So Charlie is basically saying follow like the black arrow, which is like the cursor, to see where I'm pointing. Uh, we'll try to figure out a better yes. way to do that. <laughs> OK. So let's go back to the. Well, I think um, it's coming across. Yes. So let's go back to um, the presentation again. Okay. 
So I'm just going to go quickly through what we just kind of talked about. Um, set up your profile. Um, go to plus.google.com. If you already have a Google um, pro, if you already use any other Google product, it could be Google Drive, it could be Google, Gmail, it could be Blogger. Um, you can go ahead and type the same email and password over here, um, and you will be able to kind of create your account. If you don't have a Google account, there's this sign up right up on the top where you, when you go to plus.google.com, that's where you can sign up for a new account. And then afterwards, you can basically go in and personalize your profile. Um, and this particular video, once after the Hangout, you can go in and watch this video separately. Um, this will walk you through the same steps um, as we did right now to kind of show you how to like kind of change your profile picture, change your cover photo, um, and add more details and things like that. The second video that you see over here, customize your settings, um, will take you through like the profile uh, privacy settings. Basically, how do you make sure um, that only the people who want to see, or who you want to display the information to, can see this information, kind of a thing, right? Um, and if you need help, there's a take a tour option um, everywhere on Google+. So I'll show you where you can find this. Um, so if you go back, oh, sorry, let me go back over here. You go back to your stream, like click on the home button in Google Plus, and then click on this icon, and then you have a take a tour option, and then you'll be able to find like a step-by-step -step guide on like getting started, how do you find your friends, how do you customize your profile, and how do you share, and so on. Wow. And the video has more details, so go ahead and watch that. And we'll, so, uh, Pooja, we'll put the link up again to your to your uh, your uh, Google Plus Artists page, where where they're going to be able to see the yes. uh, the entire presentation and click on the videos. Yes, yes. Uh, if you are on the chat box, if you are chatting with us already, um, you can just like scroll down. Um, to see the presentation that has all the videos, everything that you're seeing right now, it's already on there. We'll also post a link to the recording of this handout plus the presentation and everything else back in uh, the uh, Illustrator's forum so you don't miss out on anything at all. Fabulous. Okay. Okay, so once your profile is set up, then comes the interesting part because now you can go and find really interesting and inspiring people and then um, go and find like a cool contests and it, it's mostly like um, daily paint outs and scratch crawls and stuff like that and a lot of interesting stuff. Um, so let me just go back to the live demo now. Okay. I'm going back to my Google Plus page. Now if I want to find anything over here, whether it's a post whether it's um, an image or whether it's a page or anything at all, I can just type in over here. So I'll just say um, illustrating for children's books. And this is the search box, and I'm just searching over here. And I'll find pages over here that I can add. This is Mark's page, so I, can, I already have this in my circle. But if I didn't, I can just mouse over that and then add mark to my circles. Um, I can find posts. So this is me sharing my art tutors posts. And then this is Mark again talking about children's books illustrations. So it came up over here. Um, I can also search for like different mediums. So I can say watercolors. So I can type in watercolors. And now I have a whole bunch of um, posts over here. Um, so Samantha has talked about art rage and watercolors. Um, there's a watercolor painting. This is a demo that someone has just posted. And the stream keeps on like bringing up new posts as they come in. 
this is like in real time wow. so if you find too many wow. coming wow. in you can just click on pause uh, and then read this <laughs> and then once you're done you can just click on play again uh, and then let it keep on streaming stuff new stuff into your um, like stream um, over wow. here you see a drop down um, where it says everything uh, so you can choose whether you want to only find people and pages that are related to watercolors if you want to find posts if you want to find sparks and sparks are like articles and blog posts from google search um if you want to find watercolor handouts like if someone has a handout um and it, they have titled it watercolors that will show up here um you can also choose whether you want to see events about handouts it could be like a sketch call sketch call uh, it could be a paint <laughs> out uh, it could be a plain air painting invitation anything kind of a thing um you also have the option to say only show me like watercolors from my circles like i don't want like a public search um only uh. if people from my circles have posted it only show it there otherwise don't even bother kind of a thing you can also choose a location so for example if you are going to san francisco or like you know you are coming over to india and you want to say okay show me watercolors in like you know people in india talking about watercolors um and then you will find posts just from that location um so let me just click quickly click on people and pages to show you how this changes so these are all the people um that have talked about watercolors you can see a uh, professional artist watercolors american journey um and then you can see rebecca has mentioned in her introduction watercolor painter and then a lot of other folks have also mentioned the same way um you see this add to circles button you can just basically click on that and mm. then like put it in whichever circle that you want so i'm going to put her in artists and illustrators but you can choose any circle that you want and circle names are private they you, only you know what circle names you have given to these folks so you can put in any name that you want over here it doesn't have to be like artists or anything else depending on whatever will help you remember what the circle was for you can add that in over there you also have an option let me go back to everything just to show you what it looked like okay you also have an option to save this search what this basically does is if you're going to type in watercolors every day probably or every week rather than typing it yourself you could just save the search and then click on the saved search um and here is where the saved search shows up so i'm going to another account where i have less number of circles here is where it will show up in the main home page um just under your circles you can kind of click on more there's my watercolor search i click on that i go back to the stream and it will show me real time posts oh this is so beautiful there you go uh a uh, real time search of people posting some lovely stuff like this in your stream uh, uh, uh pooja this is act all activity on google plus and not not go the google search engine at large is that right yes. it's, it's the google yes. plus crowd all of, okay this is all posts people and pages on google plus um okay. the sparks bit brings in content from google search so where in the drop down where it said everything and then people posts and everything else um there's mm -hmm. a option called spark so let me go back to that i'm just screen sharing okay. again over here in everything where you see sparks that's okay. basically um like from google search so if i click on sparks i will see blog posts so it says from the web it basically has ah. blog posts and it has how to paint with watercolors in artrage this is something that yes. you can share mark yes <laughs> it talks about watercolor workshops and and same as yeah. course you can also kind of plus one these so i'm going to plus one this to say this is great uh, and i can reshare it so i can share this to my stream um and other people who are following me who might be interested in both art rage and watercolors can just go ahead and then um kind of look through the video and maybe reshare it to themselves to their circles hey mark is there any way you can invite felicia in i think she's set up now uh 
or is there too yeah. many? Yeah, yeah. Let's let's keep it. Let's keep it. Uh, um, is she on Google Plus now? I th I think so. Yeah. Um, I know there's a, a me, minimum amount, right, for the actual. Yeah. Well, well, we're not at the minimum. Um, oh, okay. Pooja, how can I invite one more student in? How can we invite one more uh, student into the chat? Can I just click invite, and she's got her new Google Plus up? Oh, um, can she add your new account to your to her circles? I think she'll be able to. Um, yeah. Charlie, can you can you tell her to add uh, M. Greg what? Mitchell? Hold on. Uh, let's see, what is my what, M. Greg Hold M. On. Greg let's, Mitchell at yahoo.com. Let's, let's try this. Let me just ping okay. this chat link. Um, let me just put it in group chat so anyone who has it can just come over. Okay, thanks. Okay, I'm just typing. If you have a Google Plus account, just click on that link and try if you can join in. We'll, we'll max out at nine or something like that. But. <laughs> yeah. Okay. One more okay. quick question, um, Pooja. Tech question. Oh, oh yes. uh, Scott is asking if there, if uh, you have the capacity to turn on, if we have the capacity to turn on his. Oh yeah, he can he can unmute anytime. Hold on. Uh, um, Mary, you might have to. You know, Mary, you'll have to mute yourself. So everyone within, uh, I'm just going to screen share and show you where you can mute yourself. Uh, so here on the top right corner for you, you should see like a mic. Uh, you can click on that to mute yourself and when you want to speak, uh, just click on it. So I'm going to show you how this looks in mute. Ah, I see it, okay. And then just click on it. When it says on, you should be able to speak. Uh, Scott, if you just do that like a couple of times, uh, you might be able to speak too. Yeah, so we were um, at Find Interesting People. Um, so the first video in this presentation also helps you find people you already know, like people who are in your contacts, uh, people ha who have already probably added you because they are on Google+. Plus. Um, so certainly watch this video. If we do a demo, it's going to take some time. So watch this video in the presentation, and you will know how to find your friends. Um, and once you do that, uh, just go by the demo that we just showed you, like use the search box up over here um, to kind of search for uh, probably topics that you are interested in or like people that you are interested in. You could try searching for, um, I think uh, there are some um, magazines that are up, they have pages uh, on Google Plus so you could try Searching for that artist network is on Google Plus, so you can try searching for that too. Um, and then, as I mentioned, you can search posts, you can search invites to events, uh, and so on. Um, and as I said, this box that says save this search can be used if you are probably searching for the same thing every week or like more frequently. Um, so, in this is where your circles show in your home section uh, and you can basically just click on it, click on more and click on the search that you have saved and you will go back to that stream where you can go ahead and search for more and more stuff um, and things like that. Um, one of the things that you should also kind of look out for is the explore tab. This basically surfaces up all popular content and trending topics on Google Plus. So anything a lot of people have plus one or reshared you will find it over here, and you might find some interesting stuff from time to time. Might not be necessarily <laughs> art related, but you might find some like funny jokes and stuff like that, probably, um, or interesting news uh, from around the world. Um, the other piece I wanted to kind of talk about in um, like finding interesting people is shared circles. Um, once I have um, like people I have added, or people have added me. Um, I can go ahead and like click and put them in any circle that I want. Um, just click and drag to the circle, and then I'll be able to kind of add them in over there. Um, I can also share this circle. So if I have, say, a circle of um, like photographers or a circle of artists, um, I created a circle of art tutors. 
I can easily share it and what it basically means is I'm going to take this circle and share it with anyone else who might want to follow the same bunch of books. So that's what shared circles is. This is what a shared circle looks like. You can see all the people in the circle. Um, this one just has 15 people, but you can share up to 500 people in a circle. So if you're collecting artists on Google+, Plus, if you're collecting photographers, or music buffs, or foodies, um, you can share them in a circle. Um, and then to add them, all you need to do is click on this, and you will be able to add the whole circle to your circles and then you'll be able to follow their posts and things like that. And before we move on to the last sec uh, the next section, um, one of the things I wanted to show you was how do you control the volume on your uh, mainstream. So this is your mainstream. Um, and you can imagine if you start adding everyone to the stream, um, and if you start adding like a lot of people, say you follow like 5,000 people or you follow like 200, 300 people, it's going to get really um, kind of crazy with all the posts coming in and you might miss, on, miss <sighs> out on like some interesting posts uh, or important posts. So one of the things that you can do is you can click on the circle over here and you have something called volume control. This bar up here is called volume control and I can decide how important the circle is to me. Um, so, for example, if I want all the posts from here to show up in my mainstream, no matter what, I can like just bring it right up to my right. Um, and this, if you kind of mouse over, it says show everything from the stream in your all circles or your mainstream. So basically everything um, that's posted by these folks um, will be showing up in my stream completely. Um, you can also completely drum it down. So let me go back to another circle. So right now it's in the middle, which means show most of the things, but not everything. I can just say, I don't want to see anything from here on my mainstream. And this could happen if you find like interesting people, but they post a lot and they just kind of um, add more and more content to your stream. So you miss out on important stuff. You can just kind of say, don't show anything from this circle to my stream. But you can always just go to the more section, click on the circle, and then see everything that people in the circle have posted. Does that make sense? Mm. Yes, very clear. What a good solution. Facebook doesn't have all these calibration tools. Um, I'm going to just see if we can play this video, and, because this is like a much nicer demo of how to share stuff. Uh, let's see if you can hear the audio too. Can you hear the audio? Um, so basically this is your share box. This is where you kind of type in stuff. Um, and then over here you have the option to like add photos, add videos, um, or just make it into an event. And we'll talk about event in a little bit. Or you can just add a link. Um, for any of these, you can just go ahead and then uh, if you, for example, pull, like type in a link over here, so it shows the links show up over here. Um, and then over here is where you can add your circles. So if you just click over here and start typing, um, if I just want to find myself, I can find myself, like this is sharing to an individual. If I want to share to a circle, I can just share by typing in the name of the circle, and it shows me who the people are. Um, or I could just make it public. And public basically means um, anyone um, who, like, 
isn't even in my circles can also see it. And this is great, especially if you want to get the word out about your artwork. Um, you want more and more people to see what you're working on. So you can certainly kind of use the circles for like private messages to your family, your friends, um, or to individuals that you want to kind of send it out. But if you are kind of publishing, like uh, um, if you are kind of looking at sharing an, uh, an artwork that you're really proud of, or maybe you did a series of sketches and stuff like that, certainly consider like posting to public because then anyone, even if they have not um, kind of added you to their circles, will be able to kind of see it. Um, this also is um, indexed by search engines. So whether you are searching on Google Plus or on Google or on any other search engines, these posts can come up later on also. So you might post something today, um, maybe a really nice watercolor sketch, um, and then like months later, someone might find it because they were searching on it, and your post had like comments which said like you know here's my watercolor sketch or something of that sort. Um, so and they that's could, one they of could the follow things. you. Yes, Puja, they and could they follow you right back to your profile. You. Yes, okay. yes, they, it would come back to your profile, and they could then add or, you or to page. their circles. Yes, absolutely. Fantastic. It could be your profile okay. or your page, and then you could kind of uh, see that over there. Um, with circles, okay. you also have the option to notify people. So if you just mouse over, there's an option which says notify about this post. Um, so if if, pe if you feel that people should get like an email notification or a notification in their account that you have posted something, um, you can click check mark this and you they will find a notification over here and also in their email if they have set it up to receive emails uh, email notifications. Uh, but use this sparingly because if you start notifying people about everything, they kind of st stop paying attention to that. So if it's really important stuff. You could probably notify someone and then say, "Okay, like you know, send a notification to everyone in the family circle um, that I'm posting about this kind of a thing." The other thing, basically, uh, one of the questions that um, is very common is, "How do I kind of get more people uh, to kind of plus one my posts or like you know, reshare my posts and things like that?" Um, and it comes mm. with how well you engage with the rest of the people that you are following. So if you are following a bunch of folks, you see some excellent paintings in your stream, um, certainly plus one. Um, if you are commenting on someone's uh, post and then you see a comment that you really like, go ahead and plus one that too. Um, you also can kind of respond to other people's comments. Like if you see someone posting a question about watercolors, um, and you want to kind of figure, like, you know, they asked a question and you want to kind of answer it, um, you can certainly go ahead and kind of uh, post on someone else's post too, um, as long as you are keeping it on topic. Um, and then you can extend the conversation. Like, if you like something, um, like the watercolor paintings that we saw earlier, uh, you want to share it with people that, that are following you because you think that's interesting, um, you can certainly kind of use this button, which is the reshare button, um, to kind of share it with everyone else. Sorry, yeah. that, sorry, that was me. I was just going to ask a question when you stopped talking. Oh, yeah. I just, I just wanted oh. to, yeah. I, I just wanted to verify that, that um, when you plus one something, is that just getting you higher up on the search engines for your posts? Uh, no. How that's helpful? or So uh, plus ones on posts. They do not go over on a, your search engine or anywhere else. Uh, this is just plus ones within the post itself. So people who can see the post, so if it's a public post, um, everyone can kind of view the post. Uh, they will be able to see how many people have plus one and how many people um, have uh, kind of reshared the post. So it's only within that post, within the people that you have shared it with. So it's within the group? Yes. There's also it's just plus a way of ones on, yeah. There, there's also plus ones on uh, the web. I can show you that. Okay. Um. So if someone goes to your website or blog, and they see a plus one button here, if they click on this, they have the option to also share it to their stream. But if they don't share it, this will still show up in search for people who are in their circles. Um, so, for example, if I'm like I come to this page 
um, I look at something which says, okay, painting with pencils or um, my sketches or anything of that sort. I like this page really uh, a lot, so I just go ahead and plus one this. Um, the next time when someone in my circles is searching for maybe sketches or watercolors or something specific that this page um, it gets displayed in search for, they will see my uh, profile picture next to the page. So it's more like recommending this page to my people and uh, my friends and family, the people that are following me to say, this is a page that I recommend, just go ahead and check it out kind of a thing. So a plus one button on your website will help like surface up some of your uh, results in the search engine uh, results because you can see, like if you see a set of 10 results, but then you see one which has the face of your friend over there, your eyes are automatically going to go over there. So this will kind of show up in the search results also. But the plus ones in post, they will not show up anywhere else except on the post. There are a few more videos in the presentation that you can see uh, for a little bit more on how to share. Um, so this one is basically how do you uh, plus just one person into the conversation. Uh, so for the folks who are having a little bit of trouble getting into the Hangout, this is how I added you to the Hangout. Like I just plused you and then said, here's the link where you could join us. Um, so watch this video later on to see how that works. So it's basically plus okay. and your name. So I can say plus and Mark Mitchell and he will get added to that particular conversation and he'll be able to post on it and add for like plus one and everything else. This one is basically how do you edit your post and make changes. So one of the things that's really nice about Google Plus is you can edit the post after you have posted it. Um, it oh. It's really great because I keep making so many mistakes. So I don't have to worry about like, you know, what did I post or, oh, I should have posted some other picture instead of this and things like that. So this video will take you um, step by step on how do you edit mistakes? How do you update your post? Um, or if you just posted something like you shouldn't have, how do you go ahead and delete it? So you can make changes anytime that you want. Um, and this, this yeah, video is show you how to do that. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, mean, I do that a lot, <laughs> especially when I'm posting from my mobile. And this video basically shows you how to share your photos with the right audience, with the right circles. Um, so check this out uh, again. It will show you how to upload albums and how to share it to the right um, circles that you that, and not to everyone. Thing. And this is basically about the plus one button, as I mentioned. Um, so I, if you want to just go ahead and see how the plus one button on your website works, watch this video, and this will show you how to share from anywhere on the web, not just Google Plus. So I'm going to move on to editing your photos now. So let's go over back to my account. So one of the really cool things that you can do over here is you have a Photos tab, um, and you can upload your photos over here. These are some of the photos. So within Photos, these are some of like the cloud photos I took outside the other day, um, just as reference pictures. And these are some of the uh, splashes that I created for the negative painting part of it. Um, so one of the really cool things that you can do over here um, is you can go to your albums and edit your photos from uh, on Google Plus itself. You don't even have to go to any other account um, or download it and open up Photoshop to do that. Um, wow. So let me just pick one of my profile pictures that I don't mind editing. <laughs> Like I like stuff. the Mardi Gras one. That's <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, so all you need to do, so this is basically, I went to my albums, and then I clicked on this specific album, and then I clicked on the picture. So it just pulls it up in the light box over here. You see an edit photo option over here, so you can click on that. Oh, on the top left? Yes, on the top left you see okay. an edit photo, and it'll, it's basically okay. loading the photo editor over here. So you have a whole bunch of basic um, edits over here, so I can rotate it if I want, and it's going to be a little slow because I'm screen sharing, but yeah, there you go. I can rotate it, I can straighten it if I want to. Um, 
and then I can like fix the colors, the sharpness, and so on. I also have like effects. So I don't want to apply the colors. Let's go to effects. And then there's a whole bunch of effects that you can kind of apply to the same. So let me try, let me just try black and white. And then I can move like the highlight, the spotlight, wherever I want, probably here or here. And that's like a black and white spot, uh, a color spotlight, and the rest is black and white. And I can mm. change stuff over here to edit it. And then there are a whole bunch of other options. Um, you also have the option to decorate, which means a whole bunch of effects. And this is where I got like the mask and everything else. So you have masks, <laughs> you have beards, and you have uh, other stuff. And then if you want, you can just go and type in some text. So click on the text, type in whatever you want over here, pick a font, and then the text will pop up over here. You can move it around. Um, and once you're done like changing whatever you want to change, you can just hit Save. It will ask you whether you want to replace or save a new copy. Um, if you don't want to mess up the original, just click on Save a new copy, and it's just saving this up. This is great, especially if you want to like make quick fixes and things like that. Um, so for example, if I wanted to kind of uh, crop this picture or edit, like make minor edits and stuff like that, uh, I don't have to download everything again just to make those minor changes. I can just go ahead and make the changes here itself. So before we get into the Hangouts part, let me check if there are any questions over here um, that we should uh, oh, Pooja, Pooja, uh, Clay just, yes. just asked, can you put a watermark uh, or a copyright notice or uh, something on these images? Yes. Uh, um, you can do that with the text option. You can just use the text option and add it in. Um, but you will have to do it for each of those photographs. It doesn't apply to everything in your album. You'll have to do it one by one. One at a time. OK. Yes, one at a time. Hey, Pooja. Yes. Can you um, tell people how to make a slideshow on your main header of your artwork if you wanted to make kind of a mini portfolio? Sure. Like that one artist uh, you showed us? Yes. Yeah, I, so, I have it on mine. Yeah. Uh, so basically, you need like a GIF file, like an animated uh, GIF, um, in order to, which basically rolls. Um, like you know, one slideshow, one set of images after another. Um, I can send in some tools that you can use online to kind of create those animated GIFs, and then you just upload it like just a regular cover picture over there. Yeah, I think I have mine loaded as JPEGs, and then you just you click on a picture and it pulls it up as a slideshow, and you can pretty much click through. Uh, let me this is on your profile. Up. Here it's on my profile, yeah. Like you, you, if you see the, you know the the main picture that's behind it, you can cut that up into instead of using one long picture there, you can yes, just make you have the a bunch of, yeah, a bunch of little ones. So it kind of looks like a mini portfolio on your profile that anybody can easily see and click on. But it's not animated. It doesn't scroll or anything, right? Like no, you, ha you have to click through it like a slide. Yeah. Okay. So okay. This got it. Crab book. Let me just show you what. Um, like Charlie was talking about, I'm just going to. Um, here's Charlie's profile. So you can have like five multiple ones. This is not animated. This is like static images. But if you click on it, you will basically get all the images in the same album. And the reason you can see like five pictures over here is mainly because um, it, the cover photos are kind of stored in one single album. So once you click on this, okay. you'll also be able to see the rest of the pictures in that particular album. And it's the same for all of your other albums, too. So let me just see if you have any other albums. So I can go to this one, and I can click on any one of the images, and I can just scroll through them. So anytime you upload as an album, this also comes in as part of that. Nice. And there's also an option for slideshow. So if you go to the album, you have an option over here which says slideshow. This basically 
shows it in slideshow mode. So it will kind of auto move to the next uh, image instead of you having to click to the next one. Okay, great. It's nice. Yeah, it really makes your artwork easily visible to anybody visiting your profile. So, yes. Yeah, it looks really good. Especially for the artwork that you are really proud of, you should certainly share that as a public album so that you are able to kind of uh, allow others to kind of view your portfolio. Um, and I'll just go quickly back to the photos part um, to show you where you can kind of decide who sees your albums. Um, so again, um, you click on photos, and then you click on albums. Uh, this place will tell you whether this is open to all or locked um, and, and just private to a few folks. Uh, this one I haven't shared it with anyone because I am still editing those um, edges and stuff like that. I have a separate album I shared mm -hmm. um, after making those changes. So if you click on the limited, you can see who this is shared to. This is just shared to me right now. So I can just put in okay. like Mark's name. like. I can just say, just share it to Mark. Um, or I can say, share it to everyone in Mark's class. So this is a circle that I have that I'll share later on uh, after I add everyone in this hangout to the class. Um, so I'm just going to share it with Mark's class. And then I hit on save. Then this will just send um, both Mark and everyone in Mark's class a notification that um, I have shared an album with them. And they'll be able to view these uh, photographs. Um, if I don't want them to reshare this, like I only want them to see this but not pass it along to others, I have this option to lock this album. And they, what this does is um, they will only be able to view the plan and share it. They won't be able to add others to this album. So if I want to just keep it just to myself, like if you are sharing it with an editor, um, and you want to say, this is just a first cut, like I don't want you to share it with anyone else. You could just share and then make this into um, like, a, um, lo like a logged album. And you can always just go back to the album and check who you have shared it with and remove people. So if um, the person that you have shared it with, you don't want to share it with them anymore, you can just remove them and then it says stop sharing. It's now private again. So you can decide at any time who can do these photos of yours. Okay. Oh, How much so flexibility? It says, can others... <laughs> yeah, so the question over here is, can others download uh, uh, my artwork, or is there any way to prevent that? Um, again, if you just go into settings, so the gear icon will take you to the settings. Um, on Over here, you have um, multiple options, including like who can send you notifications, you can decide if anyone should be able to send you a message or only a few of your circles, um, especially if you are promoting yourself. I think it should be anyone so you don't miss out on anything. Um, you can also decide whether you want the messages over email or a text message on the phone or if you have an Android or an iPhone or an iOS device, um, like an iPad, uh, whether you want to get the message within your Google Plus app. Um, and if you scroll down, um, you will have this photo section where it says, allow viewers to download my photo. Mm. If you uncheck that, wow. people won't be able to download these. If you check these, people will get an option to like download the full-size original photo um, in addition to the one that's being displayed over there. So you can choose not to let people to download that at all. Um, <laughs> three people that say you have three people in a critique type situation that you wanted to use hangout mm -hmm. for um, mm -hmm. but you don't want anybody else to be able to join that hangout how would you mm -hmm. make it not available to the public like once you have your three people in say your critique partners that you write with right a uh, great question so um hangouts like just like your course um, you can share it just to one person or a circle or make it public. It's completely up to your choice. Um, so if you okay. just invite those two other people to your Hangout, those are the only ones that can see the Hangout link 
when they go to your profile. The other people that you haven't invited won't even be able to see that. Okay, good to know. Thanks. But the but the hangout on air situation that we're doing that's just that just defaults to yes. public. I mean that's really yes. yes yeah on YouTube. Hangouts on okay. air uh, is for public broadcasting, uh, and when people enter the hangout on air, they will be given um, the information that this is being broadcast. So if they don't want to enter the hangout, they can just close the hangout right there. They won't be recorded at all. It's only when they're inside okay. the hangout that it gets um, it gets recorded. Excellent. Okay. Good. And I see a lot of questions in the chat. Uh, I have a transcript for this, so don't worry if I miss anything or haven't answered your question. I'll go back and look through the whole chat and then uh, answer those questions also. Okay. Um, you are being a wonderful resource, Pooja, and we're all deeply appreciative. This is fantastic. Okay, so just like a quick check, should we continue with the other three parts or should we kind of host another hangout? Like is it getting late for people? Like what what do what does everyone think? Um, is it too I, much? I, I, I say let's let's I say it's let's continue. I don't know how okay. much how much airtime YouTube will let us uh, post. Do that do we have a will they cut us off after an hour or something like that? Um, I, I think after there was, 90 there was a minutes, time when there should be, yeah, I, I think after might, 90 minutes, there should be like a, a message over here. Uh, but I think we can kind of go in and try it okay. out and then see how that goes. See, see if they cut us off, and we can always do another one. Scott needs yeah. to get ready for a lunch conference. So, but yeah, and My we'll, we'll, uh, we'll do so I'm more. I'm good for right now. Okay. okay. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. That's lucky. I was feeding them and doing the whole thing while I listened to you guys mostly. So, nice. <laughs> so now it's a nice yeah. and quiet. So let's continue, Pooja, until. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So. Until until uh until the hangout tells us to stop. Yes. So this is basically uh, just the same stuff that we talked about on editing uh, photos and stuff. Um, so you can check it out in the presentation too. Um, now coming to the interesting part, which is Hangouts. Um, like Charlie asked, like uh, Hangouts are great for like smaller conversations or something like this, which is like a public broadcast. Um, and what Hangouts does is let you do like a full-fledged video chat with nine other friends uh, or followers, um, and you could have like just a a, a very informal hangout with just your friends or family, or it could be uh, like a critique that you have, or like a discussion session with your publisher and your editor, all in different places and things like that. Um, so this video will show you how to kind of start a hangout. Um, one of the things that I also wanted to show was when you go over um, to your Google Plus uh, profile, there's a hangouts tab over here. So if you click on it, so you can see all the Hangouts that you can join. Um, so th these are like Hangouts. Um, it, this is our Hangout going on right now. This is like an on-air <laughs> Hangout. So you can watch, like these are other public broadcasts that you see over here. Uh, how to monetize your blog. There's like productivity part one and so on. So you can watch a whole bunch of Hangouts just like this, uh, all streaming on YouTube. Um, or you can watch like wow. featured uh, hangouts um, with celebrities, with politicians and stuff uh, based on what you're interested <laughs> in. There are also people who do like random public um, hangouts, so you can also check out if any of these are something that you would be interested in kind of joining in. Um, and if none of these interest you, there's a hang start a hangout button right up over here uh, that you can click <laughs> on and just create your own hangout. and like. Ask your friends to join you over there. Um, uh, that's what you can do with Hangouts. And watch this video to have like a quick uh, this thing of how uh, this looks. Um, there's also Hangout effects. Um, so there are a lot of apps within Hangouts to make it um, fun. And there's also apps that help you like share better and things like that. Um, so I'll. Uh, do a quick video of some of the apps that artists can use. Uh, I know it's going to take a little bit of time if I start adding those apps, and I don't want to lose out on the chat 
the group chat that's there. Uh, you can only use one app at a time in the Hangout. Um, so basically, uh, this um, like effects lets you add effects like this. I'm just going to play it very quickly a video. Let's see if this runs. So later on, when you try your own Hangouts, try some of these apps. Certainly try Google Effects, because it's a lot of fun. Um, one of the apps that I would certainly recommend is the Google Art Project Hangouts. Uh, and I'm just going to play like a quick video to show what this looks like. Um, but Google Art Project uh, basically um, gets in uh, a lot of high resolution images from museums around the world. And you can oh search for any images over here. And within a Hangout, you can share the same with the people that you're hanging out with. So you can zoom in, zoom out. Hi, guys. I just found this picture you might like. Yeah, quite cool. And look what I'm seeing here. Isn't Van Gogh's Starry Night quite fascinating? Wow, the details are awesome. So here's some of my favorites. The Gas, Mervyn Peak, Billy Air. I've always wanted to see this little man up close. Let's take a look at this pre raphaelite masterpiece, Ophelia by Millet. <laughs> Mark, there's so much you can do with this for your class. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty awesome. It sure is. Uh, and I hope that we'll kind of test out some of these Hangout apps during like smaller Hangouts, like with just within the class and stuff like that. It will be a lot of fun, where we are not being recorded and we can just go crazy. And we can oh, get others idea. outside to also kind of join in, because I can see a lot of stuff happening in the chat, and I feel like I'm missing out now. <laughs> the, the group on chat is, is active, huh? <laughs> yeah. So we saw like basic hangouts, um, which is like nine people plus yourself just hanging out. Um, there's also an option to broadcast your hangouts like we are doing right now, um, which is basically you could have nine people join in with you, um, and then you could just publicly broadcast it. It's great for like classes. It's great for sessions. Um, you could watch this video to see how to get started, and anyone can broadcast um, their own hangout. But there are a lot of fun stuff uh, that's being done. So uh, Daniel, as I mentioned, does art rage classes on Hangouts. Um, there are people who uh, have like uh, cooking demos and classes on Hangouts. Uh, they cook in their kitchen, and then people can follow around and then see what they're working on and try the same things. Um, there are English-speaking Hangouts, like for people whose uh, where English is not their uh, native tongue. So uh, practice Hangouts for people who can just jump in. So teachers and educators start using it too. Uh, so there's a lot of fun stuff that you can do with public Hangouts. And this is something that you can try out too later on. Wow. Um, and because um, these Hangouts are recorded and um, kind of uploaded to your YouTube automatically, um, you could even start like a like broadcast a Hangout and then just go through your artwork. like. Just display your artwork and go through it. You have a video at the end of it with your commentary um, that's uploaded to YouTube, and then you can share it on your website. You can share it um, on your profile, wherever you want. You could share that. Just do your own little presentation, pitching your yeah your yeah. skills. Wow, that's amazing. And you could do like a screen share. You could use all the apps that are available, um, and everything that you do within the Hangout is going to get recorded. In other words, you, you put your own presentation together, your own your own uh, yes. PowerPoint presentation, 
and just uh, yeah. just air it. Wow. Uh, uh, okay. Or even um, with just a photo album, like you just want to go uh, yeah. to like a slideshow, and then you just want to talk about the artwork. You can certainly do that. I see, and do a running commentary of it. Yes. Yes. While it's, while it's showing. Wow. Um, the next thing over here is events. Um, so events can help. events are basically um, connected with your Google Calendar. So um, you could set up an event for a stretch crawl. You could set up an event for a hangout like this, or you could set up like you know an event for um, like any kind of birthdays or anything else um, that happens like once in six months or once in a year or something of that sort. Um, but what e events are really great for are also for collecting your photographs. So let me show you one of the events in my account. You can think of an event as like a mini profile or a mini page where you can have comments, you can have photographs, and a lot of other stuff. Um, so I'm just trying to see, find one which has like photographs that I can show. OK, let's try this. So this is an event that was created for the Celebrate India movement, because yesterday was our Independence Day. And then mm -hmm. we have all of these photographers um, who have shared their photos within this event. So I can ah. just go to one place and then see all of these photographs in just one place within that ah. event. So some of the ways, like uh, as artists, that we can use it um, is especially if you go out for, say, probably a sketch crop um, with uh, four or five uh, others, you could create an event for the sketch crop. And once um, everyone has like done their sketches, they have scanned it in, um, they can all post it in this one place uh, that you will be oh, able wow. to access under the events tab. And then you will be able to add comments over there. You will be able to add other updates. As you can see, um, someone has added like a comment over here. Someone else has added like a reply to the comment, plus one did, and all of that stuff. Um, and you can just access all of this in one place. Um, another way to kind of use this is if you have a class um, and you want to kind of share an assignment, say Mark sends us an assignment saying, everyone do like a negative painting exercise. He can create an event for negative painting. Everyone uploads it. So Mark can just go to one single page and then see all the exercises for that particular assignment. Um, <laughs> and then post his comments and stuff like that <laughs> instead of searching in like different <laughs> albums and stuff. And we'll be sure to post only the best great. ones. I'm yes. <laughs> and yeah. we'll be sure to post only the best ones over here and not show him the others. <laughs> I don't know what I did, but I'm certainly not able to tab now. OK, let's just see how this goes. Oh, oh. Yeah. Um, you can also kind of um, make your invites more personalized. So within events, you have like a set of um, like um, these headers, or you could call them like cover photos, animated cover photos. They are really cool. You should check them out. Um, but you can create your own. Like if you have made a painting, um, set that up as a cover photo so that it sets it apart from everyone else's events um, and things like that. So watch this video to find out more about how you can do that. Right. And the main part of it is um, you should know like how much time you are spending um, on all of these activities and how it's kind of um, what it's bringing back to you. Uh, so especially mm. within Google Plus, uh, if you have had public reshares for any of your posts, you can click on the tiny little arrow that you see next to your post and click on View Ripples. And then it, all of these are basically what's called ripples. So these many people have shared Cliff's post. I think there was some 495 or something. He's got like record reshares for these, this one. Uh, some ah. snake-like cake. <laughs> I don't know where he found this, but it's pretty interesting. Uh, a little <laughs> creepy too. <laughs> so basically, these tiny circles represents everyone who has reshared your post, um, and these bigger circles are people who have had other people reshare their post. So basically, for example, if this was me, someone saw Cliff's post in my stream, in, posted by reshared by me, 
and they reshared it. So I led to another reshare kind of a thing. Um, this really helps you. Do ripples only? Out. Uh, I'm sorry, Pooja. Do ripples only occur with events or with posts or with albums? Posts, or, or? It, ripples will show up in posts that have public reshares. So if someone has reshared it Public publicly, okay. you will be able to see the okay. things. You'll also be able to see like how many people plus one done, how many people reshared. But this basically tells you who else reshared from their circles kind of a thing. So you can keep on kind of finding out like where the whole path goes. Um, and this is really kind of fantastic to kind of watch because this also shows up in real time. Um, Wow. The other option for you, especially if you are uh, posting a link to your web pages or your website or your blog in your post, um, is if your blog or website uses Google Analytics, um, you will be able to see yeah. the same kind of information in Google Analytics. Um, you wouldn't see like how many people have reshared and stuff like that, but you will be able to see basically like um, how many people have come from Google Plus, how many people have plus one. Um, and so on and so forth. So especially if you say posted about your like portfolio, you can go back to Google Analytics and then check uh, how many people clicked on the post talking about your portfolio and then you can decide like you know if you want to post more about that or more about other topics and things like that. Um, it also tells you where else people are coming from so you can decide uh, where you want to spend more of your time in promoting your artwork and stuff like that. Excellent. And the last bit is basically uh, creating a page. Um, now, while creating a profile, um, this is like your personal profile. Um, and for some people, uh, that might be enough. Because with circles, um, you can keep your professional posts and your private posts um, and your personal posts separate. Like, you don't have to like share the same amount kind of stuff with everyone, you will be able to segment that out. Um, pages are really interesting for artists when you have like multiple things that you want to showcase and you want to have like a dedicated page uh, for each of your uh, mediums or each of your talents. Um, so for example, if I do like pen and ink and I also do um, uh, like for example watercolors, um, and I know that different editors like different kinds of portfolios. Um, I could probably create a page for pen and ink, and I could create a page for watercolors. Um, I could create a separate page. You can have multiple pages attached to your personal profile. So you could pro create multiple pages based on like the different audiences that you have. So if you also write, and you are also an illustrator, you could have one page for you as an illustrator, one page for you as a writer, and then you showcase like your different talents in different pages. So your albums do not have all your photographs, including um, like you know watercolors and colored pencils and pen and ink and stuff like that. You have like a separate page uh, for each one of these. And then nice. of course you want uh, people to follow you, um, so you should add like your Google Plus badge. This is available both for your personal page and for your page, uh, personal profile and for your pages. Um, and this basically helps people know that you are on Google Plus and add uh, your, you to their circles right from your site itself. Um, and let me show you where, what it looks like by going back to my page. Um, so this is my website. And as you can see, it says Puja is on Google Plus. And then there's a drop down where I can just add myself, add this person to my circles, kind of a thing. Um, in the same way, Blogger also has this option where you have a Google Plus badge. I can click on that, and it shows like add this person to your Google Plus. And you can do the same for your pages or for your personal profile. And this basically helps people find you um, and find the wonderful posts that you're posting. So if someone comes to my blog they like what I have posted, they'll probably want to see what else am I interested in and start following me on Google+. Plus. If I can go back to the presentation, uh, we come to the end of the presentation. Um, and that's the link that you guys are chatting on right now. Um, we'll post that for there people who missed this session. Um, but uh, we'll post, the, there are more resources over there. So uh, especially for questions that were asked before 
the session started. We have already posted some resources there. Uh, but for any of the questions that we missed out, I'll post those answers on the same page. Um, so keep that bookmarked and keep the link that Mark sent you on his blog also bookmarked because we'll post on both the places um, for this. Uh, Pooja, got it. Over to you, Mark. Uh, just yes. a just a real quick summation here, um, and I, I think you've addressed this with some of the questioners in the chat. Yeah, and the comments too, but we have we all have Twitter account. I mean, we have Twitter, we have Facebook. Many of us we have our blogs. Why should we also go to the extra effort to put up our Google Plus profile and generate some pages, a page or two? Why why Google Plus? Can we talk about how it's going to help? Sure, all sure, of us? absolutely. That, that's a great question. Um, so the first thing, of course, uh, is discoverability. Um, as you can see, it's really easy to search for content. Um, and especially if you post publicly um, the right kind of content, like if you want to show yourself as a watercolor artist or a children's book illustrator, and you post uh, relevant content with good photographs and stuff like that, um, it's easy for others to find you uh, within Google+. Plus. Um, if you post publicly, it's also easy for people to find you on search engines, whether they use Google or any other search engine, because all of this is public. People can access it just like they access your web page. Anyone who doesn't even have a Google Plus login will be able to see any public content that you post over there. Um, the other thing, especially about discoverability, uh, is also finding like interesting people who have similar interests. So let me try the screen share. Uh, one more time. Um, so one of the things that you might have noticed if you saw Google Plus posts um, was uh, basically hashtags. Um, and hashtags are used to kind of uh, tag certain uh, posts by some of our artists. So for example, this is a painting of the day hashtag. And if I just click on this hashtag, uh, this is uh, like linked over here in the post, I will go to other similar posts that are uh, that people have tagged with the same link. So, for example, this is a painting someone has uh, an oil painting someone has posted with the hashtag painting of the day. Um, if I scroll down, I'll see more paintings from other folks. Um, so here's another one with resin and wax on hardwood. Um, here's I think oil paintings, yeah, oil and aluminium, and so on. Um, in the same way, if I search for, say, um, if I just search for paintings, I'm just looking for paintings, any uh, medium, anything at all. Um, if I search for that, I'll find, so, oh, there's a painting in progress that someone has posted uh, from their plane there. There's some more, like, 3D painting someone else has posted and so on. So you can find a lot of relevant content based on who you're sharing it with. Um, now, most of these are public posts, but these could also include like uh, limited posts or private posts that were sent to me because I'm in their circles and they sent these just to me kind of a thing. So you will also see public content and posts that were shared with you. So especially if you have, um, like uh, if you're posting something, certainly add a hashtag or two, um, not too many because it looks like weird, but um, at least the medium maybe and something else to describe it would certainly help. Is there a tutorial on hashtags in the... Um... I can send it over. I'm not sure if I did that. Yeah. I can send it over. Okay. That's... It... Pooja, do you want to check the chat and see if there are any outlying questions that are, that are urgent that you'd like to answer online or do you want to just uh, take a look at the transcript later and then... I think I'll take a look at the later. transcript what, what are you because I think... Yeah, I, okay. I think there it's are getting coffee late for of, you. Mm -hmm. No, no, it's not late at all for me. Uh, but I think uh, there are, there might be a lot of questions, and I don't want to miss out some of the stuff oh, okay. for anyone. So okay. if there's any Great. urgent question, can someone just post it again now so that we can see it in the live chat? Uh, if any not, I'll just go to the whole transcript. Yeah, if not, I'll just okay. Great. Um, kind of uh, answer these questions and also send the transcript. We'll have this chat transcript saved and I'll also save the chat that was within the Hangout so we have a copy uh, to go through 
once we have the video. Terrific. This has just been absolutely wonderful and pretty mind-blowing, uh, Pooja. I'm and so uh, I know we all have a lot. Oh, we loved it, and we have a whole lot more to learn, we know. But um, but I'm starting to see the advantages of Google+, Plus, including Google+, Plus with all the other uh, social platform that you're building. Uh, there's a reach that Google+, Plus has, because it's Google, that uh, that so many of the other sites and services and online platforms don't have and may never have like Google has it. So um, Google, I hope you can do another one of these for us on some other Google topics. I mean it's oh, a huge absolutely. it's absolutely. a huge thing. And I love the I love the uh, the ability to be able to find other people and other groups uh, that you talked about earlier in the program and then the importance of building pages. So there's a lot to digest here and it's just been a, a real treat and a real education for us. So uh, oh. Guys in yeah, chat, yeah. leave your thank yous for Pooja, and I'll I'll say thank you right here in our chat box. Check, uh, and uh, we will get back with you with more information and Pooja's answers to your questions. And uh, thank you so much, Pooja.